Do better, see, do better today on Do by the River. Boy, do we have a lot to discuss today. We got Casper rumors. We got Brendan the Potential, his first European sale to another European team. We got training back. We got a new assistant coach. We got a lot to talk about. So don't you dare go anywhere because you do not want to miss this episode of Do by the River. And let's get it started, guys. Eh, done! <laughs> And that is right. Welcome, everyone, to Do by the River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia Union. And, of course, we are brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Before we get into today's episode, real quick, guys, if you're watching this live, first off, thank you so much for tuning on in for this fun jam-packed episode of Do by the River. But make sure you guys hit that like button if you do enjoy the podcast. And do us a solid and subscribe to Ed Parcero Philly's YouTube channel as we broadcast every single episode through here. And, of course, you can find Do by the River along all favorite sports are podcasts on PS and radio. And of course you can find that for every stream podcast from Apple, Google, and Spotify. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's just me and my boy, Justin. So please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on in Justin, CEO of ball news network. Friedberg. What's happening, babe? What's going on, man? Uh, you know, just, uh, just, just, just hanging in there. Uh, been, uh, been a great, uh, week in terms of, uh, union news. Uh, Still a little teasing, but hey, there's been more, more, more news in the last week than we've had in a, in a, in a, in a few uh, recordings, and you know, just our luck that uh, hopefully nothing happens while we're recording, uh, because <laughs> <Everyone> miss- <laughs> because let me tell you the amount of you know I, I certainly was <laughs> refreshing Twitter today, <laughs> praying for some news to update before we recorded. So that we'd be like, you know, I feel like we were on, you know, ahead of the scoop or everyone asking, have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? And I literally have to say, I, I don't know what you think. I'm, I just talk about the team. I don't, I don't have any inside sources. Yeah, of course, man. If, if, if something happens, just so we do have the sound drop, the da na 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 in case something doesn't in case happen. And, 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 and Justin today was like, for all the sneakerheads out there, those really serious sneakerheads out there who like usually like wait and wait on their phone for the new sneaker drop to buy them. That was Justin today <laughs> trying to find some, some striker yeah, that, rumors. Literally like me, like, like, you know, two screens in the office, one doing work <laughs> and one just refreshing twitter like every like half hour or so going all right now all right let's go so let's, let's see we got news here so we got news here and there was you know the most contradicting news i think not too long before we hopped on here uh but it, it's not even worth mentioning because it, it's it's a guy that apparently is going to charlotte at least that's what a rumor heard so well we'll definitely we'll definitely get into, into that one for sure man but uh justin i don't know about you man but so Sunday, as you know, the birds got eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, it wasn't as heartbreaking as the union getting eliminated from the playoffs, but dude, the first thing that came to my mind, and you know me very well, the first thing that came to my mind was there was 41 days until the union season. You, like, you know how my crazy Philly sports mind works. Like with the Sixers, I'm just waiting for the playoffs, but I'm so excited for a cold, uh, wintry afternoon and we're watching the union face off against Minnesota, so... That's what's on my mind right now, Justin. I, I mean, I we got know. we got as according we got forty one days to sign another striker. So uh, <laughs> hey, earn the uh, tick 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 tock. That's uh, and not the app. Let's get let's get on that. <laughs> we don't need you dancing out there. We need you signing out here. Come on, sign these checks for sure, man. But uh, well, Justin, good news. Preseason training already started, man. They're already practicing in the in the Philadelphia area. I, I I was I was pretty sure it was all in the YSC, but I thought I saw something about Wilmington today. But regardless, man, um, it's exciting to see the boys practicing, to, working together. Uh, we'll get the Casper second. Casper's out there working out as well. However, though, I do have to ask Justin. I'm putting you on the spot. There was two things. One, an identified striker out there, and number two. An identified goalkeeper. Now we know that besides Andre Blake and Matt Freeze in this area, the best goalkeeper is Justin Fry. Were you the I uh, uh, unidentified goalkeeper, sir? No, uh, no, and, and I can confirm because uh, that goalkeeper had hair. 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, un- unfortunately, uh, I, I I am here to officially announce that, that it was not me. <laughs> Justin's here to clarify. In fact, it was not him. It it was not him for sure. But to disappoint all he- my fans, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe soon enough, man. If hopefully, you know, knock on wood, I, ha- I have a wood table next to me. Knock on wood. Uh, we don't have to go through another COVID situation. But if it does happen, uh, Union, Justin is available. He does have a cup. Um, so he he is uh, willing to hop. I mean, hey, Jim Curtin's been Jim Curtin's been at the field where my games have been. I don't know if he was there you go. scout me, but hey, got to gotta, gotta keep my options open. He, he saw firsthand, Justin. He saw firsthand. He knows what's going on. <laughs> Good stuff. But uh, all right, let's let's get to the shit housery today, Justin. So we, of course, we're gonna start off here um, with the spiciest of the spiciest rumors and and union talk uh, that has been going down. Um, apparently, uh, from I guess it started out with uh, an. A, a Polish magazine? Is, is this what I saw correct? A it Polish was a, a Polish reporter, which honestly, that's how a lot of these the union uh, <laughs> pretty much rumors bro. start to happen. Uh, 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 since Ernie and, and Ernst has followed pretty good at keeping things tight lipped, the only time rumors have ever leaked out is from a is from an international source. Um, mm-hmm. not always, uh, sometimes not always with any accuracy, but typically. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and this one, it made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. Okay, all right. So pretty much what's been going down, um, Casper Shabilko, uh apparently is getting a lot of interest from the Chicago Fire. Casper wants, uh, essentially, he wants a reassurance from the club that he is the guy. Obviously, he sees what's going on. He hears what's going on as well, and. Uh, so Chicago has been put in the picture. There's a couple other teams, you know, you, you love, you gotta love that one too. When they throw in a couple other European teams as well, that are unnamed, uh, get thrown into that as well. But, um, listen, we kind of talked about this earlier, Justin, in the all season, if at the right price, a team wants to offer the right price for Casper Shabilko, I'm allowed, I'm, I'm okay with him going. Like we talked, we we beat this this beat this drum already. We saw what happened in the playoffs. Uh, this is now the second playoff iteration. Actually, the third and the first one, he got hurt. He could he didn't even play against the Red Bull or Atlanta, so that was pretty tough. But we saw what happened twenty twenty. We saw what happened in twenty twenty one. And if we can upgrade, it's clear that we can. Now, if Cas Casper should feel like he is the guy. I mean, the guy when you talk about MLS terms, the numbers are pretty damn good there. But for what we are trying to do, what we need from that position. We need more. That's just the fact of the matter. I, of course, I'd be okay with keeping him. Like, that's not the worst case scenario, but we're talking about money, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about money. And for however you however you may feel about how the uni do spend money, I, I mean, it's working right now because if you look at this team over the past couple of years, they have improved year after year after year. Now, if somehow this year they don't make the playoffs. Uh, listen, I'm right there with you guys. I'm ready to burn down Chester, okay? So I'm not, not, I'm not figured to the guys, obviously, but... Uh, for you, um, Justin, look, it, it's obviously a, a bit of news that kind of came out of uh, left field as far as Casper wanting to get out, but we can't kind of be too surprised about this. What are your thoughts overall by these rumors, and do you think it'll actually happen? Um, you know, when I saw the I saw the the initial tweet, it it definitely caught me off guard. Um. It, it it not in like like it, it was just kind of like a like, hold on like like there been there's been nothing at any point to suggest this and then you see the you see the tweet which roughly translated to Chicago is going to offer a, a mill a season which would be according to his you know the 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 official record would be a bit of a slight increase to is his salary. Um, it'd be a three year guaranteed contract, which I think is part of it because according to what I see for his contract with the union, it's through to 2023, but it's club options. Um, so I, I mean, that essentially means that it's on the club, whether or not they want to bring him back. Typically, I mean, you would even with guys like that, like, it, I mean, it gives the club flexibility but I think Casper's in the prime of his career. 
he's i mean i don't really believe the european interest i mean i mean, I mean his right yeah his wife's american like she's from here so oh really okay there. so like i don't know if that's necessarily the case but i don't blame the guy if if chicago is the right listen if they're willing to and i thought i heard around three million which would be around his, his value even if it's two to three like for a guy like Casper, and no, don't get me wrong, Chicago may not be the best fit overall. I mean, they do need a striker, but Chicago's also been a bit loose with money, and it's not always spent in the right areas. And I'm sure for <laughs> for Chicago, it might be an upgrade, but you know, it's for for the people who you know either want Casper to leave absolutely or defending him to stay. It's kind of like. You know, they say, oh, he'll do better there. It's kind of like when CJ left. And it's like, okay, he's done good at other spots, but it's he's still the same. Like, we saw in the playoff game what happens when CJ doesn't get service, when he's mm-hmm. really dragged through the game, like when his his, his feet is cut off. Like, it, you see that's the same stuff we're dealing with with Casper. And in all honesty, I, I'm not saying Casper get the hell out. But if the offer is right, I've been saying this. If the offer is right, you can certainly give him out. And, and I think also if Ernst wouldn't pull that trigger, unless he already had something lined up pretty close, like you're not going to give away your top <clears throat> score if you don't have someone else in mind. Because let's be honest, if you get rid of Casper and you don't have anyone else lined up, you're literally in the same, if not a worse position than you were last season in terms of your striking core right and i i don't know much about the obviously we don't know anything about this this trialist this unnamed striker um typically the trialists aren't really any high one anyone high profile right so i'm not exactly or even like someone's like oh he's you know getting interest like typically it might be an uh, mls vet uh, mm-hmm. a UFL guy who's coming in for a trial stuff like that um I, I mean, listen. I I love Casper, but at the same time, it it becomes increasingly harder to not go. We could do better, and Casper. I I don't think he needs someone to help run off of him. He needs some uh, someone who could shoulder the load, because when he tries to has to be the number one striker. I, like without a, a solid number two, I, he just doesn't like. You see that he can't do it all himself. Yep, he's Take not it. that type of a striker. He were, I mean, he's done and at his best when he's when when Sergio's been hot. When, like when he's had someone be able to play off of who can play, you know, can can kind of match with him. And it's tough because Casper can be a little more deliberate with his movements. He's while well, he's a good finisher. Takes them a little bit to get the ball out of his feet. Like you see all of this stuff, and it's like you know he. I mean, I I I wish him all the best no matter what. But it seems like regardless of whether or not he's he's not you know complaining for a move, he's if it happens, it happens. If he's saying I would like a standard contract, if not, can I please go somewhere where I will? He's still showing up at training. He's still. Dude, so at the yeah. very least, he's not going to let it affect his on the field stuff. So be I mean, very that's always good this. when you have a, a a player who may want a move, but isn't going to let it affect the team he's currently with. Right, right. I I completely agree. Real quick, just want to give a shout out. We got Zach in the in the chat here. What's going on, Zach, my man? Showing some love to Lamb, Lamb Jenkins, boss man. Uh, AK Gaming. I, I'm sure Justin AK Gaming is loving this type of. Uh, Casper Chicago. <laughs> they, they love their Polacks too, Justin. They love the Polish players. Oh yeah, no, they um, yeah, they. Uh, but uh, I mean, listen, AK, and, and we we've mentioned you before when it comes to this. This because there's been a, a f- I've heard a few a few people actually um, uh, you know stuff uh, like. I, 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 you guys, you guys still got a lot to, a lot to, uh, overhaul. So, uh, I don't know necessarily if Casper improves your, uh, yeah, position. yeah. maybe you sneak into the seventh seed, but 
don't know. Yeah, hey, y'all, y'all still got a lot, a lot of yeah, your own shit to figure out. Yeah, man. Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get Casper those balls in Chicago? That's really what I would, I would be looking at. But um, I, I when I when I look at the situation, um, what people need to remember, Ernst got this guy for free. For literally, free. he was his first signing. He was coming off of like two, not playing for what like two years with a foot injury. Like, I'm sorry, but that's a that's a steal. Like, I mean, his value was pretty low. And you got him on a free, and now his value is over $3 million. Like. That, that's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. Okay, game with good off. It will join a team with the best MLS logo in a good environment. I, I, mean, I guess they did have a good logo. It's it's not it's not a bad city. Uh, I don't mind the new logo either. Uh, but good environment? What do you mean by good environment? This is a great environment here in Philadelphia if you're talking about uh, team chemistry, a good dressing room, and all that. I like it came as Polish. It's pretty cool. I want a Polish player, and there's a lot of Polish people in Chicago. I, I, I do know that <laughs> they that is a big Polish. Oh yeah, no, that is a community. there's a big Eastern European uh, community in, in in Chicago. Uh, but I, I, I mean, it, it would be a it. Listen, it'd be an upgrade for what you have, which isn't much. I mean, you let you let Barrett walk, but yeah, it was you know, wild. I mean, Y'all better pay up the money. That's what. That's what. It matters. Yeah, that's what it matters. Really. I mean, it. I think realistically, an in interleague like Casper is a, a solid MLS striker. I think. That, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think Chicago. I mean, if he, I, I can. I, I know they usually play in a one striker system. Um, if he has some good, you know, playmaking options around him, maybe he does have right. some good hold up game. But I don't know if. If you're relying on him to be the guy, you you're gonna be you know feeling very inconsistent, wanting just a little more. Yeah, yeah, I want to. I and I said it too on on this YouTube channel. Casper can start on the majority MLS clubs, but for what we're trying to do, where we're trying to go, uh, I I just still think that we we can upgrade at that position. Um, and we'll, we will see what happens here, Justin. I wanted to ask you before we move on from this topic. Um, for the people who believe, you know, this is another, uh, for lack of a better term, a Carson one situation where he, you know, he feels he's valued higher than what the organization is doing. Um, he doesn't want to compete. What do you have to say to those type of fans who feel like Casper's kind of copping out of this, of this competition, essentially, is what it is now? Um, I'd say you're crazy. Like, I, the, the people are like, Oh, Casper, it being pushed out by the fans and you know doesn't feel appreciated. Who said we're not Philly sports fans? <laughs> like it's, but like it, the, the difference is, it's not that we don't want Casper. Casper knows the fans appreciate him. Like he come, he go, comes over to this to the River End every game, and you know, like he he knows that he plays hard for the team, but if he wants a guaranteed contract and the team's not giving him a, a reassured deal in terms of guaranteed deal. It's a year on year thing. Can you blame a guy for saying, Hey, like I'd like a spot where I know I'm going to be playing for a few years. Like, yes, sir. don't get me wrong. It's unlikely that the team's just going to go. Yeah. We're, we're cutting you loose. I'm not sure they communicate that ahead of time, but obviously he's your top scorer right now. If you, you know, would want to replace him with something, but you're not shoving him out the door. It's just he's like, well, I don't really feel like like am, am I your guy? Are you going to give me the reassurances? And that's, I mean, that's natural for a player. It 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 is a business. Like this is his job. He ha- he, like anyone with a job, you want stability. Yeah. And if you can get a guaranteed contract somewhere for three years. I mean, right now you're in the prime. He's in the prime of his career. I'd say, take the money and run if you can. Yeah. Well, hopefully those uh, Kevin Kincaid uh, rumors and those uh, Twitter findings on transfer market. Uh, transfer market's a crazy world, Justin. You know, you got us Uni fans going. We're literally fiending looking at strikers, and then you got Toronto. Uh, okay, we need to buy someone to go to transfer market. <laughs> it's, a, it's a crazy world for 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 uh, for front office and and for. Uh, and for fans as well, but uh, you know, 
Benjamin Tate. Did you see what happened to Tate? He literally got kicked out of <laughs> yeah, that one. That one was was uh, wild. <laughs> holy, holy shit! Uh, Justin, the minute I saw, that, I was like, "Earth, sign him now. Do it. No. I don't care." <laughs> now some uh, some breaking. At least I don't know if it's breaking news, but uh, apparently, wow, wild trade. Uh, LAFC is close to acquiring Maxime Crepeau from Vancouver. What? Uh, that's a that's a huge improvement for goalie. I mean, the only goalie Why they have is Thomas Romero. But I don't know, be... Dude, but wasn't he like the reason like the big reason why they made the playoffs, like Vancouver? Uh I mean Brian White did score a lot, but yeah, I mean <laughs> we'll call it to Matt and the Red Bull fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Uh, I mean so they do have Vancouver. A... Uh, I haven't seen what they're. I mean, they got a young, like, good young goalie uh, behind Crepo. Um, but what is Vancouver getting back in this deal for? Crepo? Oh, it, it, it's early stages, but it's a rumor okay. that apparently getting it, it was tweeted by uh, Stephen Goff from the Washington Post, so that that, that carries a lot of uh, a lot of legs. Um, yes, sir. Around, around these parts. Uh, Justin, real quick from AK Gaming. AK Gaming, there's no need to pause. It. We're we're all here for the banter. But what happened with the Spurs today? Winning goal? Oh, uh, Steven Bergwijn had a double, and uh, they won three to two. Like I did that. it was cr- apparently crazy. I missed. I was watching the game, and then I had to. Uh, 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 I was like, I left the office around four, and so I okay. I, missed, I missed the craziness. But yeah, no, it okay. was bonkers. Well, you know what? You can we, we like to see you happy, man. So so. Kudos to you and your Spurs, man. Awesome stuff. Well, you know, that's actually a perfect segue, Justin. Let's get to the prime because our Medford Messi, our Brendan Aronson, yo, it is still wild to see Brendan like in the European transfer rumors. Like, it's crazy. I, I love it. I love yeah, it, dude. You just get like all, you know, gooey inside. Like, okay, that was our guy. That's, that's, that's one of ours. But uh, listen, latest rumor we've heard the whole AC Milan or RB rumors. The latest is Leeds. Leeds, listen, Leeds. Really, really want Brendan Harrison. There was a fifteen million dollar, or sorry, fifteen million euro uh, offer, which I think is twenty million in dollars. Um, and Red Salzburg blank. Yo, Salzburg really tricky with their negotiations. They said no, we don't like that. And Leeds is preparing a better offer, from what I heard here today. So they really want Leeds. You got Leeds fans on Twitter <laughs> pointing out that Brendan's girlfriend back here at home uh, is actually following Leeds United now. Uh, I'll say this right now. I want to get your thoughts on this. But number one, uh, if, if there's a better offer for Brendan Aronson, more than twenty million dollars, dude, are we? Ta- are we? Can we potentially get ten million back for from this Brendan Aronson sale? Like, that's what I'm thinking. All right, money now. machine crazy. go burr. That's <laughs> crazy. Like the unit could possibly like. I don't think it'll be ten, but something close to ten. And, and then and you're on twenty percent of the deal. So whatever. Yeah. You're- and then on top of that, Justin, like we're about to sell Casper for for what two to three, whole, you know, you know, we'll see what happens. But dude, we're making money off of like, off of like great, like ridiculous sales that literally I feel like don't don't take too much. But my God, man, we're uh, we're out here making some moves. But um, I guess your thoughts on on, uh, on the situation, Brendan, going to uh, Leeds, and do you like this for Brendan as well? Uh, this this Leeds club. Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Um. And I, I think the reason why is is the system. I mean, uh, the the lead system is is that high press. It's that go go go. So it's gonna be the exact same thing he's been playing at the Union and at Salzburg. Uh, I mean, you know, to come into the Premier League and a team that I feel like it's gonna be stable enough to to stay up. They're having a little rough time right now, but they're still above the. The relegation line uh it's not like it's uh you know a josh Sargent to norwich where norwich <laughs> ain't, ain't Dude, i saw up. they're playing him at winger yeah i mean uh, josh Sargent's also a mess right now like there's a lot uh, like he's just has not played well a lot he's gonna be a dead as well <laughs> but but like I, I think i think of any of the teams in the, in the prem i think leads fits you know what you want you want someone that is going to fit that bielsa model i think brandon aaron's any the exact predictable player if he could have several of those you know bielsa would want that in a heartbeat and i think you know i'm just picturing 
you know, Brendan, you know, providing great service to Patrick Bamford or Jack Harrison or like, you know, sure you have these or, or Rafinha, like you have these guys that are just, like are, are playing pretty well together. And I, I, I just, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's great. Like it, it just, it would be the perfect move because, and I don't think it happens now. I think, I think it either happens in the summer or it happens after the world cup. I don't think he's going to make the move now. I think he's good. I think, you know, he's consistently being called in. I think it's easier for him to stay, you know, stay and, and continue the solid minutes, continue the, you know, the play and, We'll we'll see. I mean, if they increase the the money, I mean, twenty percent of forty million dollars <laughs> is, is is still you know that, that's that's yeah you know, what eight million dollars like that's pretty good uh, you know like and I think the more you look at it, the more like it's like you're you still get you're getting twenty percent of any future sales, Brendan is going to fund this team for a long time. <laughs> like and and honestly it's it's good cuz he's a great player and he's developed far beyond I think what what a lot of people picture for him. Like the fact that he's blown up to be a you know a Champions League player, a US men's national team regular. It like it it's you know the fact that we're you know we're we're talking about you know him on one side and Christian Pulisic on the other, like you know the, the Hershey, the Hershey to Medford connection here, like it, you know, it, it's. I mean, sooner or later, we we might we might have a starting eleven of all tri-state area players as national team. We don't know. I, I, I mean, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be the day when this area, you know, you know, stands the whole men's national team? <laughs> Who said Philly's not a soccer town? Come on now, I love this. I I absolutely love to see it. Uh, I'm I'm agreeing with you. Uh, you know what? One other thing I did here. Oh, uh, how much is sell on clause? Cool. Uh, it, it's twenty percent of any future sales. Right, right, right. Yep. Um. So what I want to ask you as well, just something I I also saw. There are some fans who believe that Brennan's not ready for the jump to the prem. They would rather see him go through the Bundesliga. Do you have those any of those same sentiments? No, no, I no, no, one hundred percent no. Um, I I think you you see how he's played in the national team qualifiers and I, I, in the champions league games, if that doesn't dissuade you from that, I don't know what will like, you know, it, it honestly, I think Brendan's risen to any challenge he's, he's taken on. So, I mean, I feel like that's a lot of underselling. Yeah. You know, the fact that you don't think that people don't think he can take that challenge. And right. I, fully expect if Brendan makes that move, he will absolutely rise up to that challenge. Uh, yeah. And, and I think what need, people need to realize, like I understand that Salzburg is in the Austrian Bundesliga. Um, but if you're talking about like those second tier, so like after the big five in Europe, like Salzburg's a pretty good club as far as those second tier European clubs go. So it's no slouch of competition. I mean, the dude l- literally was balling in, in, in champions league, which is probably the most important club tournament in the world. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for this. You know, I, I guess I'll have to be a part time Leeds fan, and, and uh, that means you too, Justin. I, I know. I mean, listen, and, I, you know. <laughs> I you don't buy any other any other uh, jersey, but for for Brendan, I, I mean, I couldn't buy a Red Bull jersey, but I could buy a a, a Leeds a Brendan jersey. I would I would I would do that. Or or we'll have to ask our friends over at Icarus and Paul uh, Katrina. Shouts to Paul uh, to make us a, a, another Brendan jersey part two with the Leeds color. <laughs> <laughs> more, 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 Brendan, more Brett. God, the last thing I need is uh, <laughs> is is, uh, is Paul to, uh, to to take to take more of my money through. Uh, through uh... <laughs> seriously, man. Seriously. All right, good stuff. Um, let's uh, let's move on to uh, back to our club here, the current club. Um, really big congratulations, just to Jack Elliott. Um, looking in a contract extension that's going to go through 2024 with the option for 2025 i mean honestly when it comes to this move i can't be any more happier for this kid kids took a chance like it's it's really a big chance these kids are taking like jack harrison too coming from england 
uh, to come here, go through the collegiate ranks, and then get drafted. <laughs> like these, these, these Brits are like, I have to get what? Oh, I have to do what? And then get get to the the big leagues. Like, but he he took that route, Justin, and, and it's really worked out really well. You know, from um, competing with all, uh, you know, people forgot like he kind of took the job away from Austin Trusty, someone that we really loved here in Philadelphia. And then, you know, him and Mark were a great duo. Mark gets sold, and him and Jakob, I feel like, have been an even better duo. Um, the way they kind of lock down all these uh, front lines uh, for, in the playoffs from the Red Bull and, and uh, Nashville. Obviously, we won't talk about the Eastern Conference Finals, but you, you guys get the picture. And he's been one of the better uh, center backs here in this league. Um, even the ability to, to have that hold of play, Jim trusting him to play that six a couple times in 2020. That was pretty fun to watch the free kick goal last year. Uh, listen, he, he's been a lot of fun to watch and we're going to watch him until 2024, man. What, what are you, what are your thoughts, man? Seeing, uh, Elliot get locked up here, man. I mean, it's, it's clear that Ernst understands that he has a insanely good center back pairing. I mean, I'm sure any team will will tell you when you get a center back pairing like that, you don't let them go. Like it's, you know, we for all we joked about, uh, it, you know, NYCFC Collins and um, Chano were were a pretty good combination, and I mean Jack and Jakob. Like you basically had to force them off the field. Like they played at least almost every game. You have, you know, two players that both can can bring the ball off the field, have a uh, pretty solid passing range. I mean, Jack and, and Naka both have this insane ability, and Mark had it. Like he said, back, you just have the ability to pick up these passes and bring the ball up and drive the play and. You have a center back that can do that. That's a that's a mass that's a massive uh, you know X factor to have is that ability to have someone from the take it from the back and be able to drive the ball. And it it, it listen it's from a fourth round pick to arguably one of the best center backs in the league by far. And I'm not like I'm not hyperbolizing. Oh yeah. Oh you yeah. You'd say that as a Union fan. It's like tell me how him and Glesnus are arguably two of the top center backs in the league as a as a partnership. Like out, outside of like name me a better partnership right now. And you know, and, and, and you had, that's the reason you had one of the top defenses for a reason. They you know when you have consistency when you have chemistry. It 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 breeds well. I mean, you had the same back line for almost every game, and it that kind of continuity you can't buy. Like to have those play, like the players do as well as they did in that back line. I mean, wouldn't you reward you know your your back line for arguably one of the best seasons you've had in in in, in club history? A hundred percent. I I think Jack. Jack has earned every dollar and every year of that contract, and I'm glad that he's around for a while. I, I am too, man. I am too, and it's just continue building this great culture of, of center backs that we kind of uh, been able to build here. It's it is truly remarkable. It's 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 pretty damn awesome as well, man. So kudos to Jack. Seriously, kudos to Jack. When we're we're excited for another big year uh, from both, not just Jack but Jakob as well. Um, going into the season, and and you're, and you're right, man. There, like, there's not many people that can uh that that can get past both of these guys. Like, I even think like the the semifinals Easter, in Eastern Conference, like against Nashville, like Mukatar in that first half, yeah, he had a couple nice opportunities. But like after like what like the 30th minute, I felt like Jack and and Jakob too did a good job of kind of shutting down him and Leal. So let's see some more of that. Let's see some more of that going into the season. But um, stick with our team here, um, Justin. Another great bit bit of news: the Union have finally found the replacement for Pat Noonan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Southampton, Pennsylvania Zone, Ryan Richter. Uh, he's named the new and coach for the Philadelphia Union, the assistant to Jim Curtin. Um, and this is a guy who's part of the youth development program. He's one of the coaches, a former player for the Philadelphia Union. Uh, he was here in 2011. 
uh, played with the Harrisburg City Islanders for everyone uh, who remembers. Har- or, uh, Harrisburg's still around, right? It's Harrisburg City? No. Uh, they're not anymore. They were they were like Penn FC. I don't know in what iteration if they're around. He's part of Ocean. He played for the o- Ocean City Nor'easters. I'm sure they're not around anymore, but that's, uh, uh, that's No, they're, they're, they're still around. Atlantic City FC or uh, Big Rivals. Oh, they moved. Uh, and- MPSL. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Okay. Play for Bethlehem, the Bethlehem Steel uh, in New York Cosmos. But of course, he's been part of the union's youth youth academy and development system uh, for us. And uh, he now gets the opportunity to be the assistant here. And it continues the mantra, um, Justin, that they have been, you know, pretty much you know, exemplifying, not even with the, with the uh, coaching staff, but also with the squad as well. Just building from within, moving guys up creating this culture um, within the coaching staff and the players. And, you know, a lot of the players, you know, your Paxton's, your Quinn's, your Coles, um, your Quinn, I'm uh, sorry, your, your Jacks as well are very familiar with him as well. So I, to me, I think this is a great hiring. It, it, it also, it, it, it gives a great message as well. Like we are willing to invest within you guys because we believe in what we're doing here. Um, so I think it's pretty dope, man. What, what do you, how do you feel about uh, Rick there be getting the, uh, getting the bump up in the assistant coach? I mean, he's been around the team for, you know, so he was a player briefly. He was with Harry Burks, Harrisburg City. He, he's been around the area. He's a he's a local guy. And I think Jim and everyone on the team understands that they caught the idea of, yeah, promoting from within and guys that are ready for it. And Jim surrounded himself with another local guy like. I think it, it, it shows that he they felt that he was ready to take this step. And you know, I, I you know, I, I haven't heard much in terms of how he is as a coach, but I mean he's been in the academy for a little while and you gotta think the, the young players gotta love that they have, you know, someone that they're probably familiar with. And I it it, it it's it's good. It, it it'll be interesting to see um, you know, what he, you know, because he obviously all the coaches bring something to, you know, to like, I mean, like he's replacing Noonan and Noonan ran the practices. So now Ryan's going to be running the practices. So Scott. how, like, how is this going to like, does anything change? Does he like, how does he react to the players? So I'm, I'm curious how, how this is going to go. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. It, it's, it, it's a, I think it's a, it's a good, I think it'll be a good move. Absolutely, man. I, I completely agree with you, dude. Uh, and it, it's we'll see we'll see uh, if he has the same future as Pat Noonan. But uh, for right now, man, it's uh, it's great. It's great to see. It's great to see for our team for sure. Um, you know, let's let's keep the nostalgia going, Justin. Um, we want to give a big congrats uh, to the Philadelphia Union's very first goalkeeper, Chris uh, Seitz. He decided to hang it up um, after a 15 year career, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you. And he actually mentioned it in his, um, I guess, goodbye message. I, I did not know how long he was going to last in this league after Philly. Um, it wasn't the the best first year, but obviously it was an expansion team. How much can you really expect from an expansion team? It wasn't like Atlanta or LAFC, right? Um, but he really, he, he played nine more seasons, or I'm sorry, uh, 11 more seasons after that. And he really carved out himself a really solid MLS career. I mean, I, I still remember those days. Seeing that number one be- between the uh, between the woodworks there, and uh, he he's lasted this long. It's it's really incredible, man. Uh, any any thoughts, any memories uh, you have of uh, Mister Sites? I mean, you know, it, it, in his one year, I, I think I remember distinctly the, the obviously the first game. And yeah, we were young for the man. Yeah, I people mean, forget that. <laughs> listen, we're that, not that old, people. Yeah, I mean, that first the the one goal he gave up against DC in that game. It was an ugly one. He dropped the ball, and guy just went around him and scored. And that was the two that was what tied the game at two two. Um, but you know, he I mean, despite the team, the fact that the team wasn't all that great, he 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 was always a consummate professional. I mean, he kept you in games. You you might have lost three to one, but it also probably would have been six to one if he wasn't you know coming up with the saves he did. So. I mean, listen, a 15-year career ain't nothing to slouch about. And, yeah, he was a backup a lot of places he went, but he also played a lot of games. Like, he got minutes because you knew you could count on him if you needed to. And there were a lot of times he needed to come in in a pinch. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, like I said, obviously a good career. And 
I hope you know. I say you always help players. You know, find something after they retire because it's not always easy for players after they retire to kind of find what they want to do. Um, but you know, more power to Chris and I. Uh, you know, congrats on the on a pretty solid career. Hell yeah, man! Hell yeah! Didn't we play against him this past year when he was with DC? Yeah, we played against him. Like we played against him multiple stops while he's been. You know, since he's been, you know, not with the team, but just, yeah, man. It's, and it was always tough because he, you know, he's always, even like if you're killing, like, D, like a couple years ago with DC, it was like the four to one, and he was still making saves. Like, like he never gave up on the game. He always stuck it in there. And so he always got to respect that for a goalie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, after, after Philadelphia, he spent uh, about six seasons with FC Dallas. Then he went to the arch rival Houston. Uh, in 2018, first season. Then from 2019 to 2021, uh, he was with DC United, as as we all know. Um, and it, ironically enough, uh, after Chris Seitz, we replaced him with you know Colombian legend uh, Friday Mont. So no, no, <laughs> upgrade at that position there. But um, now Friday, I mean, when he came in, it was it was big because obviously he brought a lot of that veteran leadership, and I feel like that helped the back line. Chris, Chris, great, like you said, you know, he came up big in, in those moments when he didn't have a lot of help, but you know, having that leadership from Friday. Uh, definitely uh, brought that the lot to the team, man. But kudos and congratulations to Chris Lights on a great career, man. And hopefully you, you enjoy your, your retirement. And, and don't be a stranger, Chris. If you're listening, come back to Philly. We still love you. You know, you, we still have love for you here in Philly. So definitely do not be a stranger. Um, Justin, have you been watching Study of Bad lately? Have you started uh, watching? Can uh, can't 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 say I have uh, at the current moment. Well, Fontaine hasn't played yet, but. Uh, from the reports, he's actually impressing with Ascoli. So they're going to keep him around. Uh, I thought they signed him, but I guess he uh, was just there for a trial. But they're going to keep him all. And, uh, it, that, that's that's great news, man, that he's impressing the coaching staff. The, uh, the get, get in, it's always like first impressions are so important in life and in sports, right? But for him to kind of you know, show, show what he got already early on, it's it's great. It's great to hear, man. Yeah, no, uh, it, it, like I said, JT uh, retweeted a pretty credible source in Italian soccer media um, that said that he, he said that Anthony's impressed uh, over there at the trial and that the coach really wants him and that the deal should be announced relatively soon. Um, but, you know, listen, it, he, you know, he, he's taken his chance. He's taken his shot and he's earning it. And uh, again, we we said this. I, I I wish I wish him all the best, and I hope, you know, I hope maybe maybe this summer we uh we get him on uh, to you know to talk about how the half of the season was and how uh, how Italy's treating him, and you know, yeah, and it, it'll be you know, but uh, hey, you know, Anthony, if you if you're listening, uh, we, <laughs> we 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 do we wish him all the best, and uh, I'm glad to see that. You know he's taking his chance and that he's he's getting what he feels he deserves. I, absolutely, I completely agree with you, man. He will we'll, we'll definitely have to work uh, work to get him on here. We definitely uh, would love to hear his thoughts um, on on his time over there in the uh, in the Italias in the Italias. Uh, some uh, some you know just side uh, thoughts here with uh, with our league here, um, real quick, Just. I wanted to bring up: Are you seeing what's going on in? Line with Charlotte FC, mm -hmm. they have they're they're spending some money, and obviously, you know, here in Philadelphia, they uh, you know, they get they get a little bit a, a little annoyed with that one. But I, I I mean, listen, the the they it seems that they're going to get uh, Paul Ariola if that's if that hasn't happened already. Uh, um, uh, I thought he was going to Club America. Is he oh, so he's not gonna he's not going to get uh, go yeah the I think the leading the leading uh, I mean I've heard some rumors about stuff to, in MLS but I think from what I've heard there's some solid money uh, that that Club America would be willing to uh, part with that's crazy dude for Club America to go after an MLS or that's I mean, we talked to the I, boys from I mean Eagle. he played he played in uh, at uh, what was it Club Ooh, Tijuana? Or, yeah, Tijuana. Yeah, uh, yeah for for a number of years. So, I, I mean, he's not a, he's not unfamiliar to Liga MX. That is just true. But there's always been like the stigma with the big Mexican clubs that like America, Americans, MLS is just like not the quality. But and for them to 
one of them. I, I think Chivas will never change. Like that'll only be Mexican uh, born players that that'll go there. Um, but for Cuba America, they've always spent money in the, in the Americas. They're, they're their Real Madrid. They're the Galacticos of, uh, of of Liga MX. This is this is very true. This is very true. But I think for me, and obviously the other rumor was Carol. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering this, but Carol Swiderski. Swiderski. Um, he, that's the, the that's the player that was according also rumored with uh, the rumor with the Union is what they were like a number of MLS teams. This is very true. Very true. Um, so I think my point is being Charlotte is definitely willing to spend money. Are they going to be smart about it? We shall see. Obviously, that's to wait and see. Um, but um, it, it's it's interesting to see that Charlotte is uh, planning to build as, as so. It really is interesting, man. Awesome stuff. Awesome. All right. So, uh, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Do By the River. Another great one. Uh, listen, we're, we're getting closer and closer. We're less than 40 days. Justin, less than 40 days until we're back in the soup watching our boys. Uh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Have you bought a, a new winter coat, sir? Because it's not going to be, it's not going to be warm. No, man, I got, I got, I got my, I got my, I got my, my methods. <laughs> I got, I got, I got my methods. If you've seen me in the river and I got my methods. A couple of Colt 45s. <laughs> yeah, 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 you don't know what, uh, whatever, 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 uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. That's what I would say. <laughs> what, whatever, whatever makes your, your your face cringe a little bit. That that's what works uh, for sure, man. For sure, I'm I'm definitely excited, man. We'll we'll keep you guys posted. Uh, we'll have okay. We'll be back at it next week. Hopefully, we have some more great. We had a lot to talk about here with our boys, so that that's definitely great. Um, and of course, uh, we'll have some other great podcasts here for you as well. Zach, thank you so much for tuning on. Zach, watch from the start to beginning. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much, brother. And that's Love you. and that's uh, that's coming over from uh, from England. It's uh, England. It's uh, it's a bit early in the late in the late in the night. Uh, this at uh, this point, uh, <laughs> sir. So we uh, yeah, we is, appreciate man. it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, my man. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for everyone who uh, checked on in and listened. We really do appreciate that. Real quick, if you did enjoy, guys, do us a solid and hit that like button. Make sure you guys are subscribed. This will be rebroadcasted onto PSN Radio. Make sure you guys rate and subscribe to there as well. We broadcast all of our other favorite affiliates that were podcasts on there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Justin, CEO of Ball News Network Freiburg. Of course, I go by the name of El Parcero Philly. And we are telling you guys to do ball. Talk to you guys next week. <laughs>